you rascals. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. We got Dan Day filling in for Frog Boy over the next couple days. Appreciate you sitting in with us today, uh, Dan. Glad to be here, man. Life's good. The Marlins are winning. <laughs> they, are yeah, win. they, they are winning. <laughs> the Heat are in a hey. playoff hunt. And... Dan. The Heat right now are in a playoff meandering. I don't think I'd call it I... a hunt. They're just kind of bouncing off the walls right now, waiting for the clock to run out and Pretty much. seeing, seeing uh, when uh, when can we get to something of real consequence that will either end this thing or just make everybody be like, see, they did it again. It's, it's, it's only been... ending. This is only ending two ways, right? This is only ending with them in the finals or them getting swept in the first round. It's only ending two ways. You think you think that you think that's what, you know, it's going to look like. Yeah, I think it's going one of two ways because here's what's going to happen. They're going to end up the eight seed and they're going to do two two things are going to happen, Leroy. They're either going to get the doors blown off them by Boston in the first two games of that series by like 35 apiece in each game Ugh. or Jimmy Butler is going to take home court advantage in game one and they're going to beat Boston in seven games and then there's going to be nobody in the East that can stop them. It goes two ways. There's only two ways this goes. Dan, I'm going to show you a picture. Tell me what it is. Is that the Cabildo? Where? In New Orleans. That's Jackson Square. No, that's Paris, dude. Oh. That that was my that's why I showed it to Dan because that's the first thing I said. It looks like home. Well, yeah, they, they send me pictures yeah. back in oh yeah, like Jackson Square, and they send me statues, looks just like Jackson Square. And I'm like, this is crazy. I grew up in a dump, and it's associated with some of the finest things in the world. Yeah, same, it looks like St. Louis Cathedral in the Cabildo yes. right in Jackson right. Square. Mm -hmm. Let's get to our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Supercenter. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. I was com I'm conflicted here because the Marlins finally won, so I can't go black truck, but then the heat. So I, I don't know. Black truck is acceptable. Panthers right. lost this weekend. Marlins did lose the series. You know, like it was right. not a good, it was not a great weekend for the uh, for the local sports teams for sure. Um, but we'll get back into the heat a little bit later on. I want to switch over to some dolphins. So uh, did you see Leroy this weekend? Tua Tungavailoa yep. was having a camp back home in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. having a, a youth camp for the first time. He does this in Miami, and I think he's done this in Alabama, but he also he's now brought it home to the uh, to the islands. So he was, uh, you know, having some of the kids a free camp for them. They get to come and ca uh, catch these things out. And he also had some teammates with him. He had Teron Armstead with him. And Jalen Ramsey with them participating in the camp. Oh, they wanted to go to Hawaii. Well, listen, hey, hey there's no. It, it, it's a nice place to visit. It's expensive as hell, and it's a long trip. People don't realize it's a six-hour flight from L.A. Yep. This was uh, this was uh, this was interesting though. So, a couple things to to make a note of this. First off, people are claiming that Tua looks slim. They think can that I, he looks he looks like he's in it? fantastic shape. Can I explain it? Sure. Okay. So when you first get into the league, you're like 21, 22 years old, right? Mm -hmm. You start working out, and basically you're not your grown man self. So you're building muscle and you're getting getting swole. If right. you look at the pictures when I got into the league mm -hmm. versus when I like when I was 25, 26, I only weighed like five pounds less, but it looks like I'm slim. Well, it's hard to say. I mean, you have these giant shoulder pads. I can't tell what size. <laughs> to be honest with you. But I really so, so it's basically after a couple of years in the NFL, you actually get your adult body. So that's what's kind of helping him. You know, first, the first thing, and keep in mind, he wasn't doing a whole lot of working out when he was rehabbing yeah, yeah. his hip. So he was very limited in what he could do as far as like cardio or, you know, things like that. And then he was playing. So then at the next year he started doing more stuff, you mm -hmm. know, and then we start hearing about his off season workout. And then this past year, you know, he did a little bit more and now he's going to get into it a little bit. So now his body is going to start taking form. So when people say, Oh, look how chunky he is. Look at like, man, look at a lot of NFL players their first couple of years versus what they look like after three or four years. 
after getting to a program and a system and figuring out, you know, in your body, figuring out what it's going to go through. Oh, yeah. And we also had that whole thing last year where Ryan Clark fat shamed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but here was a, a couple of photos here for our, our viewing audience. Uh, Tua Tungavello, he has some new ink. He uh, he is now added to the uh, to the left arm. But you can see here on Teron Armstead's Instagram that uh, yeah, he looks he does look like he's in he's in good shape. That he is uh, he's slimmed up a little bit. You can see uh, Tua looking like he's uh, been you know working out in a in a good way here for the off season. So. I like it. I like the as the uh, years the as 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 these years build on, you're gonna say, "Oh wow, you know, it's not like." And, and keep in mind, remember, the first thought of Tua was to bulk up so he could protect himself. Yes. So right, and and it's it's the ebbs and flows of a career, man. So he like, yeah, I, I never thought he was gonna look like that forever. Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, you have to understand why, right? You have to understand why he looked that way. For example, sometimes you come into a position where they want you to play a position. They want you to gain weight. Well, like gaining 15 pounds in the offseason is, you know, you're not going to do it with all weight. And so it might not look like it will when you have that weight three years down the road. He, uh, yeah, people are also like wondering, like, did he get too big? Because I mean, his mobility was like pretty much all the way gone last it's all, year. Like, man, his his body physically mm -hmm. went through a lot from his senior year at um Alabama to his throughout his second year in the NFL, mm -hmm. right? Just imagine he had hip surgery, then his ankle, and then like not really being able to do any running or anything, then he was thrust into action. Then they said he needed to gain some weight to protect himself. Like your body is going up and down and just trying to get, just trying to find that, that, you know, that weight and that, and that, that look that you want in order to perform. Right. And, and you're going to hear him say, okay, I was a little too big. You know, I, I, I can still be stronger, but still be at the weight I want to be at. And you just, it, it's just the natural flow of like being a professional athlete. Well, Tua was asked by uh, some reporters there locally. Uh, this is from KHON, and uh, he was asked about the contract talks. And here's what Tua had to say about where things stand with his contract. Tua, it's no secret. You know, you're heading into your fifth year of your contract. How have negotiations been with the Dolphins? I know it's a big, ongoing topic. Yeah, I mean they've been good. Right now, I'm letting my agent handle that. I'm focused on my family. I'm focused on continuing to better myself, better my craft. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about that when, when that time comes. But uh, for now, exciting times ahead. That's for sure. Mm. Not if, but when. And I exciting what, times ahead, Leroy. Is, is he is, and, and I wonder if this is just from his coach and the organization, everybody's very positive in that yes. building. Mm -hmm. And and that has to feel good, right? You have to appreciate that. It's not an easy thing to do all the time, to be positive, right? Agreed. Because, you know, it's hard being a pro and, and sometimes seeing guys getting paid and you're like, what? You know, in the back of your mind, but still being positive. And Tua has been very, very positive. I think, you know, to be honest with you, I think that's why people mess with him. Well, this is interesting. Because he ain't gonna he ain't gonna do nothing. He gonna still keep it positive. It's almost like you did show prep with me, dude. Because wow. Jalen Ramsey was talking to ESPN Honolulu, and he was asked about being to his teammate. And it seems like old Jalen Ramsey, who was out, flew out to Hawaii. Yes, maybe a great place to do a camp, but flew out to support his teammate nonetheless, and was asked about what it's like being teammates with Tua, and leaves a little. Easter egg here at the end. Here's Jalen Ramsey. Must be a blessing playing with a guy like Tua, a real good leader and a strong teammate. Yes, it is, 100%. Um, he's much more than, uh, you know, that everybody gets to see and everybody gets to experience. Um, you know, being his teammate, being around him every single day, seeing how he interacts with all of the guys, uh, not just, you know, his receivers, not just his running backs, not just his old linemen, but literally the whole team. It's, uh, it's super special and um, 
he's a special dude, and and and, and uh, he deserves all the the good things that are coming his way. Wow. But he, really? <laughs> wow. I think well, Jeff just broke listen, news. Wait, no. Listen, yeah. Let me tell you the facts about that. What do you mean? Whether he believes it or not, it's coming. So you might as well be on board with it. I think he is on board. Listen, yeah, I'm not, I don't care how nice Hawaii is. I'm not flying that far if I don't like you. Let me see. Have I ever gone? No, you're right. You're right. I was thinking if I ever went to a golf tournament or uh, to a uh, a charity event, mm -hmm. if I didn't like the person, no. Nah. nah. Although, although I have gone, I have gone to some ev events that I wasn't necessarily, you know, enthusiastic about because of where they were and what I could do around the event. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. Well, there you go. We've learned Tua slim with some new ink. He says exciting times ahead. And Jalen Ramsey says good things coming his way. Very interesting. Not very interesting. We all know Tua's going to get paid. Very Why you but like, what do you, you're not like all of a sudden breaking news here. No, he's breaking news. I'm he's not, not breaking, breaking news either. Everybody knows Tua's going to get paid. That's a little something. A little Easter egg. Is it? You know, it's kind of like when you you go get the chocolate Easter eggs at a CVS after the sale is over. Oh yeah, you're like oh, oh look yep. at this. I'm Listen, stuck. Did you do that this year? Let me tell you. Uh, no, I didn't. But yeah, I didn't hear you talk about it this year. Yeah. It was a little odd. Here's the kicker: a week after Easter, hmm? we all know we're still sitting at that table at Publix. Peeps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>